are, what month is this? It's October. It's my birthday in like 10 days. Welcome to your October Pro Plus Partner Webinar. Um, my name is Jeremy Taylor. I'm part of the team here at Ojo. We're going to give everybody usually kind of trickles in up to five minutes after. But while you're here, pop open the chat window at the bottom of your screen and um, tell us where in the country you're joining us from. And we do this just to make sure that you can chat and we can see you. So Mike Cruz, Orlando, Florida, I see you, Kyle Clarkson, Des Moines, Sean in Colorado Springs. I got Dayton. Cool. Well, hey, we'll, uh, we'll give everybody a couple minutes to join as people trickle in, uh, you know, pop into that chat. Tell us where you're joining us from. Uh, we've got a good set of content set up for y'all today. I'm pretty excited about it, actually. We've got some cool stuff that we're working on to share with you. And if you can, uh, if you can be on camera, please join us on camera. We just like, we like seeing you, you, your environment. And it's just more exciting than the box with your name in it. That's right. And yeah, if Chris you, Lane. I was Go just going to say, if you, if you can't be on camera, we, we understand there's times when you can't. Yeah. If you're driving, don't be on camera because then your, your future accent will be recorded. Uh, because we are recording this webinar today. Cool. Could also be a future ah. ticket. It could be a future ticket, or it could be a number of things right. that you don't want recorded. Yeah, I learned early in life, like if you're doing something that you don't want that you don't want to be recorded or to be repeated, don't do it when it's recorded. It's like good life advice. Straight from Suits, if any of you are Suits fans on Netflix. Uh, okay, Raga, we're at 104. At 105, we're going to go. For those of you that just joined, uh, Fred said, what's up, man? I see you in Orange County. We need to go get uh, omakase again. That's some of the best sushi that, yeah, they got. Thumbs up. All right. Fred said, as long as there's an Ojo card involved, I am down for omakase. Um, all right. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining. My Chris would Sherman approve Taylor. that, by the way. Chris would approve that. Yeah, I think I've you been are. there, actually. I think I've been there, actually. Uh, no, I would approve going there. I don't know about the card being used, but I would approve going there. <laughs> uh, amazing. Okay, cool. Um, we're at 105. Let's get this thing going. Chris, uh, I'll let you kick us off. I know you had some comments you want to talk about the market, and then uh, I'll rock and roll with our slides. Uh, just to give you a quick run of show, this is being recorded, so if you have to drop for any reason, we're going to send this out. You're, we're going to share stuff that you're going to want to share with your team members, or your leadership, so don't worry, we'll send the recording out. Uh, we're going for an hour. We may not take the whole hour, but a lot of that will depend on your engagement and the Q&A. Uh, Chris is going to open us with some remarks. I'm going to go over some product updates. We're going to play a game today. It's going to be a great game. And then uh, we'll close with a powerful panel for the last half in Q&A. So, Chris... It's all yours. Well, first of all, everyone, thanks for being here. We know you guys are busy. You know, you're running teams. We know you are uh, running into headwinds, right? This is one of the toughest markets that I've um, that I've seen for the industry. You know, for, for most buyers and sellers out there, uh, well, for most homeowners, it's they, they don't know any of this stuff is going on, right? They got more equity than they've had ever. And but for for all of us in the trenches, it is it is a battle and, and we get it. And we know it and we appreciate it. And we're, we're one of the reasons we do these is to, to provide as much help as possible. And we are going to share some things, as Jeremiah said, that will be super useful uh, for your teams and uh, will help in all that we are trying to do together. So with that, um, there's a lot of stuff to cover. I'm going to turn it back over to you, Jeremiah. And I muted myself. Cool. Let me share my screen. And actually, hang on, I got to share my audio too. Uh, share audio right there. Cool. Can y'all can see my screen? We're looking good. All right, rock and roll. Um, we're gonna start off with some fun today. We're gonna have fun. Like Chris said, the market's tough. We got stuff going on, uh, so we got to make it fun. For those of you that have been on one of these before, you've heard us talk about Connect, Set, Learn. For those of you that this is your first Pro Plus Partner webinar, Connect, Set, Learn is a framework. Um, there's, there's a bunch of these out there. You've heard ALM, appointment, location, motivation. Connect, Set, Learn is Ojo's version of this. Um, and it's really simple. Connect. Be in a spot with a big smile on your face, high energy, ready to connect with the consumer. 
that set the appointment, um, you know, immediately set a time to meet the consumer in person. Sorry, I just realized I should make that full screen. Set an appointment to meet with the consumer in person as soon as possible. Third is learn. Learn about their motivation. Learn what other properties you can show them uh, and learn what else you can do to drive value for them. That is the playbook that the top agents and teams in the country are using to find success with, uh, especially with live transfers. What I'm going to play for you today is a really good example of connect, set, learn, and a really good example of what many of us were trained to do in the 90s, where it's like, no, are you pre-qualified? We need to do a buyer's consult and like kind of playing gatekeeper to properties. The reason is there's a number of agents that, and, and these are your calls from your teams that we're listening to, your success managers are listening to these and they're sharing them with you. And there's a number of you that tell me, but no, Jeremiah, like, look, I, we don't show property to people who aren't pre-qualified. We don't show people, you know, without proof of funds that, you know, and you're, I just want to help you understand you are only in your own way and your agents are only in their own way. So we're giving you real live examples. So start with a good one. Somebody give me a thumbs up. Can yeah. you hear this? Okay, great. I have RJ on the line who is locally yeah. very experienced no. of the area uh, yeah. okay, 92010. Cool. They do a wonderful job. So you're in great hands. I'll hop up the line now and let you to continue speaking. And uh, okay. Elizabeth, you may get a follow from us in a few days just to make sure you've gotten everything you need. Have a good day and thanks everyone for your time. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, Elizabeth, how are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing all right. Great morning. My name is RJ with Heller, the home seller, and I apologize for the wait, so it won't you know, take much longer. But you did inquire about the property on India Street. When would yes. you like to take a look at the property? Can I see it on Sunday around 1230? Sunday around 1230. Okay. Well, what we will do next, I'll check availability, and I can give you a call back in the next five minutes. Would that be okay? Yep, that's fine. It's just I'm at work, so I don't have a lot of time, you know. Okay. No, I absolutely yeah. totally understand. And about that property, what sparked your interest? Um, all kinds of things. I'm just new to the market, so. New to the market. Okay, exciting. And that's what we're here for. We, we can't wait to meet with you, really share with you what to expect in every step of the way. And were there any other properties you'd like to see while we're out there Sunday? Yeah, there were two that I want to see. Um, and they're in the same neighborhood. Um, all right, let me see what the other one, or I put the other, what the address for the other one is. The other one is 700 West East Street, 1001, San Diego. Okay, perfect. We'll definitely take a look at that as well. Um, and if you are aware, we could just send you a text message instead of a call. Um, yeah, to see if we great. can see both of those Sunday. And yeah. we are excited and glad that you're working with our team, Chris Heller's team, because we'll also share with you our off-market properties that our clients that are, have exclusive access to and full access by working with us awesome. so you don't have to compete with other buyers. And, and we'll we'll share that Sunday. Uh, so, again, next steps are I'll text you once I get availability from the sellers to see okay. if Sunday at 1230 works. And yeah. um and let me just confirm that we have your correct contact information. Your phone number is the one ending in 9736. Yep. Awesome. Well, I'll text you right now just so you have my contact information. And once okay. I get the confirmation, then um, I'll let you know that it's confirmed for Sunday. And then, you yeah. know, looking forward to meeting with you. All righty? Yeah. So 12, awesome. yeah, around 12 o'clock or 1230, that'd be good. I'd love to see both of them. But I have an right. appointment at one fifteen, uh a party. I'm not I have to be at at one fifteen or one thirty. So um I've got about okay. an hour. And so if we could see both of them that would be ideal. Okay? Awesome, yeah. yeah if we can get those in and then you and then you party afterwards, that's a, that sounds like a great Sunday to me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Excellent. Right. Thank you, RJ. No problem. We'll be on the lookout for that text, okay? All right. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. All right. How'd RJ do? Y'all can come off mute and talk. You can comment in the chat. You can use the emoji reactions. How do you do? It was amazing. He's pretty darn good. I yeah. like. I want to go see houses with RJ. RJ is like a party in a in a realtor all in one. Uh, yeah. Theo says he's really good. RJ did a great job. He connected. He was clearly like he was in a place with good cell reception. He was ready to take the call. He had the information. He set the appointment. He got straight to what do they want? Oh, you want to go see it? What day and what time? Awesome. Let me confirm with the seller. 
you learn what other properties are there any other properties that you'd like to see and what you heard in that call she started with i'm really busy i don't have time to talk to you right now and as soon as he asked a good question which was are there any other properties you like to see she was like oh hang on yeah just a minute i got all the time in the world because you want to know what i want to know right that was a really really good call um and that's that's probably in the in the top five to ten percent of the calls that we listen to that's like what we're looking for he also, ready to hear? I'll, I'll add one more thing he also listened well when she knowing that it was at work he said hey i know you're at work so i'm just going to text you the confirmation so i call on you back right so it makes the consumer feel like they're being heard because they are yeah spot on good call good call out, chris yeah he rj did a lot of things right rj if you're on here don't get a big hat where or else we'll play one of the other calls no. All right. For the for those of you, like, if you have questions, ask them, post them in the chat. We're going to go the other direction. Um, yeah, keyword backtracking. That's right, Devin. That's exactly what he was doing. Um, look, at OJ, we're not in the business of making fun of people or giving a hard time. So we have stripped out any identifying information from this call. And just like when you listen to Dateline, we like change the voice a little bit. So it sounds kind of funny. That way nobody will know who this is. We did flag this to the team leader, but we're going to play a call for you. When I got my license in 2001, this is what I was trained to do. We want you to hear how it feels in 2023. All right. Thanks for holding. So I have on the line who specializes in Houston. Let me hop off to have the two of you continue speaking. And you may receive a follow-up in a few days to make sure you watch everything you need. Hi. Sorry, I'm driving right now. What, it's um, driving so I see right that you're, in, you're interested in a specific property, or are you just interested in that area? Yeah, Didn't that read area. The, the I live in the area, said. and I want to, I saw there was, I think, four or five for sale, and I spotted that one on High Star. Do you know which one I'm talking about, right? Sorry, you kind of cut out. Um, you know, yeah, I spotted the one on High Star. Uh huh. Did you see the one I'm talking about? Yes, the one on yeah, twelve eight oh five High Star. Yes, yeah, yeah. So you live in the area and you're wanting to buy. Yes. Um, and have you been pre-approved? So we uh, have we, we have uh, we have the funds. So you're paying cash. Yes. Okay. Um, and what is your timeline to move? Are you, you're like, you've been looking and you saw this one or, or just give me a little bit of backstory about your um, experience so far. Yes. We just have to arrange a few things, but, uh, yeah, we're looking to uh, purchase, uh, pretty soon. As soon as we can get everything arranged. Uh, Okay, what does the what does the range to mean? I'm sorry, what? What does the range to mean? Like I I'm not understanding. Yes, yes. Well, we're looking. As soon as we find something that we like, we're going to purchase it. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we're not talking months down the road. We're talking, you know, pretty quick. Soon. <laughs> yeah. As soon as we find something oh. good. Okay, cool. Do you have any availability later this afternoon or tomorrow for like a yeah, virtual I put in, I put, buyers consultation? Yeah, yeah. I put in a, I, I put in. I don't know if you saw it. Uh, I get off work three thirty four. I put in a request maybe like six. To do a, a buyers consultation or a showing? Well, a showing. Okay. Well, there's a lot happens that b before showing, so we need to do a buyers consultation first. And I would need a copy, a copy of everybody's ID and proof of funds. So if you want to send that over to me, um, we can get everything. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end the pain. How many of you would be as patient as this consumer that is trying to buy a house for cash that wants to go see it this afternoon? Probably not many. Um, I would have, I would have hung up. I, I would have. To absolutely hung up. Yeah. Yeah, look. The, candidly, the agent, well, yeah, there's a lot of things that, like, they could have done a better job. They could have put themselves in a position to, like, take the call. They could have not been driving. But other than that, 
they kind of did what a lot of us were trained to do. They said, how are you paying for it? They asked for proof of funds. They set a buyer's consult instead of scheduling a showing. This is what we were trained to do in the early 2000s, and they're doing it. What's funny is just like when they release a new Mac and you suddenly look at the old one and it looks super old and funky and like, why would anybody ever want it? Once you see the new way and you put it in the context of the old way, it quickly becomes clear why this is not the path to success and just how much friction this creates with consumers. Um, Chris, you look Jeremiah, like you're say Yeah, I want to add something. So we, we, Jeremiah and I have listened to hundreds of calls, maybe, maybe we've hit a thousand by now. Um, as a company, we listen to thousands of calls and we also see what happens after we make these introductions. The, the data is overwhelmingly clear. The agents that use the, 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 the process that Jeremiah outlined at the beginning of this, that don't create friction, that get in front of them, that get an appointment first, like, you know, like the first call we heard with RJ, um, are converting at significantly higher rates. It's not, it's not even a, it's not even close. So um, right now, consumers um, are, are, have a, uh, be, they have an expectation. We all have expectations on, on what we want and how we want them. And expectations change, right? Um, right now, expectations are you want something, you don't want friction, you want it easy, you want it now. Um, and it's up to us as service providers to, to meet and or exceed those expectations. And the good agents are doing that and getting great results. And the ones that are still using, you know, things that worked in the past are, are, are wondering why, you know, they're not converting, wondering why, you know, consumers aren't, you know, responding to them anymore or, or getting back to them. That's right. So we are going to share this with you. We're going to encourage you to play these for your team. So they have a good example in the opposite. Um, it does actually get worse if you keep listening to the call. Um, this is a help us help you moment. Your success managers are going to keep giving you your calls. Take the time, listen to them, coach your teams, um, and work through them. Because ultimately, you know, we're both making an investment to get to make these introductions happen. Um, and then it's the agents working with these consumers that are going to uh, dictate whether or not those investments bear fruit. So that's it on call recordings. We'll keep playing these. Uh, we will keep finding more wins and whoops, as we call them at Ojo. What's the new, wait, Chris, what's the new thing that we're calling them? It's not wins and whoops anymore. It's something else. No, it's, uh, uh, wait, wasn't there one that was something in craps or uh, happy happy and crappy? Yeah, happy and crappy. That's, that's the other one. <laughs> so we'll, we'll keep finding more happy calls and more crappy calls, and we'll share with you, and we'll, we'll keep voice disguising it because it's, not about making people right or wrong. It's help, It's about helping you get the best results. So cool. Uh, I've got some news on some product updates. Some of the stuff we've shared with you before, I wanted to share it again because it's a really important. This is now live. We told you last month, we were gonna change the agent experience on Movoto where, where consumers see the, who their agent is. We're rendering now the photos, the bios, a bunch of stuff. That is now following your consumers when they log back in. We're saying, hey, do you want to keep working with the agent that we introduced you to? If they say no, we call them and then we text you or your agent to say, hey, consumer told us there's a challenge. This is the challenge. Here's your opportunity to go clean it up. Or if they say yes, we push that data into your Yeti dashboard and we, we let you know that they're excited to keep working with your agent. Your agent's photo is going to follow them all over the website. Once they're attached, if they submit additional lead forms, those leads are going to get emailed to that agent. Even into our homeowner experience, the agent bio, the agent information will continue there. As they schedule tours, they'll see it. You guys get the idea. The whole idea here is we want to keep you, your agents, your team front and center. Today, the first version of this technology is really built on a one-to-one -one relationship between the consumer we introduced and the agent we introduced them to. So it's important to know, and I'm flipping over to our Ojo agent dashboard. When you are in here, this photograph and the information in your agent profile here is where we are getting this information to display on the website. So each of your agents that are going to be working Ojo leads need to log in, go to their profile, click my profile, make sure that they have a good high resolution photo here, 
because if it's a bad photo or it's dark or like a bunch of you have car selfies, not putting anybody on blast. Uh, this car selfies look great, but let's use a professional headshot. Let's put those in here, get those loaded and all that stuff will pull through from here straight into uh, the, the uh, Movoto.com experience, okay? So make sure you do that. Make sure your agents do that. And then now if you're a team and you use an IFA model, I would encourage you to change the name of that person to whatever the team name is, maybe upload the team logo. Your success manager can give you some best practices there. But the key is just make sure that that stuff's updated and it's something that you would want a consumer to see. Uh, we try to scrub on the back end, but there's tens of thousands of agents, so we don't get through all of them. Um, so we're letting you all know. All right, next up. Uh, this one's really cool. How many of you, and I want to make this interactive. So there is a... Uh, if I stop sharing, I can see it. There's a little thing at the bottom of your screen that says reactions. Give me a thumbs up if you like, so go find this and I want to see the thumbs up. So at the bottom of your screen, it says reactions. All right. If Chris found it, everybody else can find it. Um, okay, there you go. A bunch of you are hitting thumbs up now. That's great. How many of you, going back here, how many of you give me a thumbs up if you run some sort of like cash offer program where somebody can come to you and say, hey, I want to I want to know what you buy my house for for cash. Uh, it could be a guaranteed sale program. Give me a thumbs up if you do one of those things in your business. Okay, I see a bunch of thumbs ups popping. That's great. Okay. You that run these are going to be really excited. Now, over the coming weeks on every single property page on Movoto, we are now asking people if they want a cash offer for their current property. So instead of selling, get a cash offer in your current home and buy this one before you list. It's this idea of helping them get a cash offer and do it and buy before you sell. I want to be really clear today. We do not have a national partner that is backstopping this. We are relying on you, our local in-market partners to be resourceful and run a cash offer program, um, work with Open Door, OfferPad, Homeward, Zudelio, whoever you need to work with, your own investors. I know a bunch of you just buy these yourself. That's totally cool. Um, what we're looking for is you to create a good experience for the consumer. In the background, we are vetting national partners that could help us backstop this, that could help make this easier, make it more turnkey for you. Don't expect this to be a huge percentage of your leads, okay? Our goal is to, you know, as many of you are facing lead volume challenges in your markets, we are looking for ways to not just increase that volume, but increase that volume with high quality opportunities, meaning seller leads and people looking to sell now, looking for cash offers. If you are not running a cash offer program, when the agent receives this type of lead, they are going to get a, an email the following day with a video from Chris that explains some best practices around what we call creating optionality for sellers. Um, the overwhelming majority of you have this stuff wired in, okay? For those that don't, this is an example uh, straight out of the Heller team's you know, uh, listing presentation where they show a seller, hey, look, we can give you an instant offer, no showing, no waiting, 100% certainty and speed. We'll give you a cash offer within a few days. We can help you buy your next house before you sell this one. We can help you fix up this house and improve your move. Or we can help you bring your, your home to market and get the absolute most value through what they call their value sale. Most of you are doing something like this. We're going to share this with you. And at, at Ojo and Movoto internally, we're working on ways to make this kind of a scalable turnkey program for you. So more to come there as we do that. Uh, in the first couple of weeks in November, we're going to have additional functionality in the agent tools where you'll be able to say like, yes, my team works cash offers. And moreover, these agents are the ones to send those cash offer leads to, not those. You can't do that today. We're sorry. We realize that that's what we would like to have happen, but we're just sequencing things. And so getting to market, the first thing is let's start generating more leads of people looking to sell their home. Second is we'll figure out how to get them to the right people. Okay. Chris, well, that, 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 uh, Mark asked a question in chat, which was that exact question. So Mark, we understand that is um, something that needs to happen and, and that is being worked on, um, but it's not, it's not live yet and probably won't be. Um, we'll probably launch 
our campaign to generate more seller leads before we have that functionality um, finished is my guess. Uh, yep. But it should be a quick follow. Yep, that's right. Cool. Next up, uh, I want to explain this. Several of you have like written in and said, hey, why is the client's email name like and all this all the same? Why is their last name unknown? Like these are crap leads. Why are you doing this? What I want to be clear with you all is that when you guys are when y'all are receiving a lead, the majority of those we have talked to them on the phone. They've had a conversation with us. They've told us that they want an agent. We've asked them for their name and then we're introducing them to the agent on your team saying, hey, this is Jenna. Uh, Jenna, meet the agent. There's a number of lead forms on our site where our team are testing different things. And some of those lead forms only ask for a first name or only ask for an email address and a phone number. They don't ask for a name. Um, and that's why you get this weird stuff. We realize this is not ideal. What, there's actually like a piece of technology we need to build that we just haven't prioritized to allow our team to update this because um, they are getting the correct info and they are updating it. We just haven't built the connection between our system and this yet. So I just want to clearly communicate this. Like this is not a lead quality thing. If your agents are giving you a hard time about it, just explain to them this is because Movoto is testing things in lead forms and we're not collecting some information in some places and we are in others. Um, so just know that, okay? If you have questions, let me just check the chat. Okay, so it comes up. All right. Uh, on the leaderboard, we email this out every couple of weeks. Um, I think you all have likely seen this. Let me throw it in here and open it up. We're already at 129. I don't have access to it. Anyways, so we're going to send it out to you all afterwards. Um, check out the leaderboard. There's a, there are teams having massive success. We share the whole thing with you so you'll be able to see it. Um, and so I'm, I'm going to encourage you all to do that. And I apologize, we're not going to spend more time on it, but we're going to play a game. So this is the first time Chris is doing this. I'm like staring at Chris's face because it's going to be a lot of fun. This is where I need you all to use your reactions. And so if the, if the answer is, yes, I would accept that lead, I want to see one of these. If the answer is, yeah, no way, I'm not accepting that lead, give me one of these. Okay, it's the little, the little ouch face. So would you accept this lead? This person is looking to buy a $30,000 home in Orlando, Florida. Uh, it's got security fencing around it. It appears that it is a double wide, not a single wide. But tell me, would you accept the lead? Give me a thumbs up or like an, an O face. All right, I see Kelly. I see is the thumbs up. Chris is giving me a thumbs down. Fred said, gives, gives me the face. A bunch of you okay like you all are too smart because most of you are giving a thumbs up and i know you wouldn't actually accept the lead for those of you like spencer that's giving me the angry face like thank you for being honest you wouldn't accept this lead i know that but the agent who accepted this lead sold this property so the consumer came in we sent this out to several agents all but one agent actually declined that lead the one who won the introduction ended up selling this beautiful home for 1.01 million dollars just down the road in Windermere, Florida. Um, that's an interesting thing. So next up, how many of you would accept this lead? Parker Farms, Wallington, Connecticut, $100,000. Like seriously, put a Camaro or Trans Am in the front yard with some blocks underneath it and it would just complete this picture. Give me a thumbs up. How many of you would accept this lead? Couple, see, all right, cool. Now you all have figured out my game. Here's the good news for all of you that accepted this lead. Congratulations, you sold an island. Literally, a $4.2 million island. The consumer that clicked on this house uh, was connected to an agent. Almost all the agents that we sent that lead to declined it. The one that won it actually sold an island. Zero potato island. It is literally an island. It's crazy. Here's another one. This one's in California, Laguna Woods, $298,000. That person bought a home for $1.1 $1 .1 Here's another one. This person came in, $279,000, Milford, Connecticut. They bought for $1.15 million. Here's another one, $2.35 million. I don't need to ask. You all would have bought, would have accepted this lead. I would have accepted this lead. It's a beautiful piece of property. Now, here's the interesting thing. They bought a $157,000 house. Point is, and we're going to give this all to you so you can share it with your teams. 
the listing that they click on has nothing to do with what they want to buy. When I pulled this list, there was a thousand instances this year where there's a $500,000 gap between the price of the listing they inquired on and the price of the home they actually closed on. The two things are nearly unrelated, but the most important thing to remember is that we are relational when we are successful and we are often transactional when we see failure. What I mean by that, if I am transactional and I win this lead and I sell this property, I may not feel good about that. If I am relational and I win this lead or this lead or any other lead, I know whether or not I sell this person a home. This is somebody I'm going to add to my database and I may sell them a home now. I may sell, may sell them a home in the future or I, for 90% of them, I'm never going to sell them a home, but I will likely get referrals of people that buy other properties. This agent understood that because not only did they sell that person three Summer Street, they sold them six Summer Street and they sold them eight Summer Street. So that would be a trick, three sales, one lead. Um, hopefully this will help you all as you communicate with your teams and your agents because you all are spending money uh, to subscribe to these things. And a lot of times your agents get the lead offer, they look at the price of the lead or the listing and the mobile home or whatever, and they just decline it. And they're missing a third or two thirds of the potential live transfer opportunities that you have paid for. Um, and those people could have bought islands, like literally, I'm, I'm never gonna let go of this, that that could have been that the person literally bought an island. So hopefully this is helpful. We're trying to give you ammo to go back to your teams to share it with them. Fred said wants to sell an island. Tom Tucker's amazing. It would take everything. Shauna says on the relational side, some of the customers are ticked off in the South when they find out they're looking at homes that are not available. Yeah, that, that totally happens. I mean, look, that happens when we get a sign call and the house is already under contract too. It's just, it's scripts and dialogues. We can definitely get you objection handlers for that, Shauna. Um, hey, Jenna, I'm going to skip the resubscribe thing because I'm already at 34 minutes and I'm going to give it to Chris. Um to introduce our panelists. Um, I, we wanna make sure we get enough time with our two panelists today. Uh, and so, Chris, I'll let you give, give the bio introduction. We're gonna have a panel with them for about 20, 25 minutes, and then we'll save a little time with Q&A for them or Chris or myself at the end. So Heller, you are up, my friend. All right, hey, this is, um, I, I was about to say, this is my favorite part of these calls, but, I don't know that game. That game might have been my favorite part so far, but I'm sure this panel will will trump that. And the reason it will is because we have two superstar uh, agents and team leaders on. Um, uh, Corinne, who you see uh, the picture there, is um, uh, I've I've known for a, a long time from afar, and I've, uh, admired and respected uh, what she's done and what she's built. Um, I think I often say if someone has who are the top top teams in the country this is the name that i often think about um not only has she done that she's also um like me a parent of four um and so has uh raised kids and created a fantastic business all at once uh, alex um i've had the pleasure of, of spending some time with in las vegas um super super great guy sharp guy and runs a uh a team that I was amazed how small they were for what they do. And, um, and you guys are going to enjoy hearing from them. So with that, uh, I already sort of tipped off where you guys are at, but Hey, Jenna, if you can make it just so I can see Corinne and Alex, that would be awesome. It's coming. Okay. So I assume they're both here then, right? They are. Uh, there. We're there's, here. There's yeah. Mr. R Mr. Rivlin. Um, in Las Vegas, Nevada, and Corinne, you're in. Do you, what do you consider Scottsdale or Phoenix or Phoenix? Yeah, uh, Metro Phoenix, and we have uh, three locations for our team spread across Phoenix. All right. Well, thank you for, both for being here. Um, hey, let's start off. Uh, just curious, you guys heard those two calls? Any any just quick thoughts or comments? Yeah, it's interesting, actually, that this was part of the training because I was just talking to our team um, this morning and talking about um, being disqualifiers, right? And um, asking the question, like, what do we consider a day worked? And so in our team, one of the things that we talk about is trying to get face-to-face, -face, right? Like, if a day worked, not 
if you punch the clock, you log in the MLS, you even come to the office, but can we get face to face with somebody? And so that old school mentality, Chris, I think that you and I were probably both trained on, which was we thought to pre-qualify, but in essence, we are the gatekeepers, uh, you know, as Jeremiah mentioned earlier, or disqualifying. If we can just try to get in front of them as quickly as possible, that's actually where the magic and the conversion happen. Yeah, to totally agree. Alex, and also to you? acknowledge it's not easy. It's not easy to change that. No. Like I was kind a, of, it was not easy to, I, I changed it and I absolutely did not want to change it. And I did not believe in it. And it was more of like, okay, we're going to give this thing a try. And then it worked. Yeah. So I'm not trying to say like, oh yeah, I always knew it would work. I did not want to go to that. And going to that, the numbers are indisputable. Very cool. Alex, how about you? Any any thoughts or comments to add to the to what we're all yeah, thinking. Was, uh, there were some nails on a chalkboard there. Um, it was, uh, you know, interesting because, you know, I, I'm i in sales now for, geez, it's a, from when I was 12, so 36 years. And uh, I mean, for real, 12, I was knocking on doors selling newspaper subscriptions on like the weekly basis. It wasn't a one-time thing. And, uh, you know, so I understand a lot about the psychology of sales and, I got into real estate in 2016, so I, I didn't get the the training. I mean, I understand LP Mama, things of that nature. Um, however, I was always about, you know, getting in front of that client, right? Teaching my team to get in front of that client, because even if they truly can't qualify, the respect and dignity that honestly any human deserves gets transferred to you by, by giving, you know, when we come from contribution, we get back. So that's why it's not about the transaction. It's not about the money. It's about the relationship. And if you treat relationships properly, the money follows. Yeah. Um, totally agree. I know Alex on, on your team, that's one of the things you guys really focus on and, and guys and gals, sorry. And something that you train on is like building that relationship and getting that, you know, being put on a, a blind date, you know, uh, being connected to a consumer that you don't know and they don't know you, but being effective in that. Could you share a little bit about like what your philosophy is and, and how you train your agents? Yeah. So, uh, so two things, one, you know, just piggybacking off of what I was just saying, it's all about the relationship. The second thing is all about solutions. Um, so one of our core values is solutions. And what I mean by all about solutions, it, it might sound like a platitude and it sounds, you know, very obvious. But, you know, when I listen to my agent's calls, when I've listened to other agent's calls, uh, I've done coaching where I've been the coach uh, several times and I listen to calls, uh, I tend to find us doing two things. One, we're the ones hanging up on the consumer, you know, not the physical, like click, you know, but when they say something, uh, you know, Chris, you, you were to say to me, you know, no, I, you know, I, I, I don't have a down payment right now. Or I'm not really, you know, I'm, I'm not really looking to move now or I'm in a lease for eight more months. And we go, okay, you know, sounds good. Well, I'll follow up with you uh, when it's closer to the end of your lease. Okay, bye. That's us hanging up on them, right? There's more information to get. And unless they're telling me no, we need to, to gather more information. And then it's about solutions. And where those solutions come in is, you know, right now we're hearing a, a, a big argument over rates, right? I think uh, the treasury went up today to the highest point that it's been. So we're, we're hitting on, you know, the true eights now. So rates and prices. And so my thought is I want information, even if I'm not going to be able to actually transact a piece of business with them right now, I want the information as to what that hurdle is. So Chris, if you were to say to me that, Hey, you know, uh, you know, with the rates and the prices where they are, I just, I'm stuck in the mud. I can't move right now. My reaction back to you is, hey, that's totally fair, Chris. I, I hear you loud and clear. Let me ask you, if there was a lower rate and a price or a payment that was comfortable to you, is that the only thing holding you back right now? Right? Because I want to know oh. if there's a solution there. Because if I can get, say, an assumable mortgage for you, if I've got somebody that's ready to hand over their three and a half percent, I just got one at 2.75% for someone, you know, then, then at least I know you're ready to move. But if you tell me, no, I actually have this and this and this, or, you know, my son's in high school and he graduates this year. Uh, so I can't downsize until he moves out. Okay. Now I know more. And I think there's an old, uh, uh, proverb, right? He who has the most information wins. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I want uh, that information. I, I love that. Yeah, and what I hear you saying is just, you know, really having a conversation and looking for how you can serve, how you can help. Um, exactly. but Corinne, Corinne, let me um, take this in a different direction. What, how many agents on your team? Uh, we're just under 60 agents. Okay, so you, you, you run a very large, very large team, uh, which means you're bringing on new people all the time. Can you, can you talk about how, like, uh, with with Ojo, for example, how many of those sixty agents are on Ojo? Are all of them part of them, and what do they do? Like, what's your process for deciding who is who isn't? Yeah, uh, well, I mean, just kind of like backing it up all together. When we hire somebody, um, part of the process—I won't get into necessarily the whole hiring process—but a piece of it is they do have to actually role play our lead conversion script with whichever team leader they're going to work with. And in that same conversation, you know, the team leader can interview them and ask them additional questions outside of what the recruiter has done. Um, but we get some people to deselect right there, right? Like they don't want to use a script. They don't want to go in front of it, um, a person to do it. And so that's been a really key differentiator that we do. And then when they come on board, um, they're calling out of the ponds and setting an appointment and have to get one signed agreement before they're eligible for company leads. So um, we're prepping them in the basically their first two weeks with us to really master that lead conversion script as best they can. And they also have to learn the buyer consult because today we're not doing a sit down buyer consult. It's on the fly, you know, like it pieces during the showing. So you have to know that so that you can do that on the fly. And, um, and then we're getting them put on leads. And we have several different um, lead aggregators, lead partners um, and places that company leads come in from. And what we've learned is we cap them at two different sources. So that they are not, it's just too overwhelming having too many different platforms um, and the dis, you know, disorganization that happens for the agents. Yeah. So we've just capped that because we found that to be more beneficial and easier for them to manage. I think that's really smart. I, that's, that is a great idea. Um, let me ask you uh, another question. With, with the agents that are getting leads on your team, whether it's from one source, two sources or whatever, um, what's your process or the team leader's process for, you know, holding them accountable or making sure that, you know, everything that needs to be happening is happening? Yeah. Um, I think one of the things I've learned that we're a little bit different is that we do do a company leads meeting every single week and we post all the numbers. So we talk about, you know, the good things, but we're also posting, you know, some of the things that are in the red. So there is this social accountability, you know, people don't want to be in the red sections per se we're putting those things out in slack but there is something different when you're putting that up on the big screen you know in front of all of your peers so what would we're cause posting... what, what would cause me to be in the uh, the red if i was one of your agents um if you are taking too long to answer uh if you've had a certain number of text messages sent over to you and you're not you don't have a you know we want you to be at 100 percent. you should be at 100 percent response rate um, but if you're under, you know, 95, we're probably flagging you red for that. And that's a pretty high number, but it's easy just to say yes or no to those. And then also, yeah. uh, the response time. Got it. Got it. Um, the Alex, how about, yeah, no, I think it's, um, I, I think we're, and I think most people and hopefully most people on this call understand that we're in a market where every opportunity matters and it's, uh, we probably have to inspect what we expect at a higher level than we ever have before. Um, Alex, how about you? What's your process with your team on you know, accountability and, and maximizing opportunities? So, yeah, so similar thing with the onboarding, uh, we, you earn your right to certain lead providers, right? So I'm, I'm big on getting into the pond, the old leads uh, first, and then maybe some of the uh, lesser expensive, uh, higher in the funnel leads or are where you're going and when you prove that you're able to convert and do things we, we move you on so when it gets over to uh to ojo as a platform uh, you know i'm i'm buried in that yeti i'm i'm a 99d and 99i i have very little s and c but yet i still stare at the numbers and and take them all in i don't know i i love numbers but yet i don't show up as an analytical but uh but i i know them all um and and I, I like to dive even deeper. Sometimes there, there's not enough numbers on that board because I want to understand where that number came from. But uh, but ultimately, we're looking at the data. And yeah, we're looking at exactly what Corinne was mentioning. Uh, what's the open rate? From that open rate, what's the response rate? I am constantly talking to the team about snoozing. 
And I tell them it's completely fine to snooze, like be liberal, be overly liberal. If you think that you might, you know, take a nap, snooze, just, just do it. Right. Um, Cause I want all those numbers to stay at, at their maximum because right now we're performing really well. And I still think we're performing at probably somewhere between 50 to 70% of what we could be performing. Meaning I could have, you know, that many more closes with Ojo right now. So people are leaving opportunity. And one of the big things that I try to convey to the team all the time, and I think this is important, right? Cause I think sometimes team members will look at us as team leaders and go, yeah, of course you want me to close more. You make more money that way. And no, of, of course I want you to close more because I made a commitment to you. You're on this team instead of being an individual agent, because I basically sold you on being on this team is going to bring you to a different level. You're going to be either a better agent, a more productive agent, or get part of your life back. You know, the, the same, the, the same uh, level of production, but get part of your life back because you don't have to do all the things that you otherwise had to do. So if you're not hitting your numbers and I'm not holding you accountable to that, I'm failing you. Yeah. I love that. Love that attitude and love that approach. I, Corinne, with the, um, we all, all of us run teams and have teams on this call and we all are facing various challenges. What's, what's the single biggest challenge like you're dealing with and what are you doing to, to solution it? Um, I think right now it's the psychology of the agent. So um, it's usually three things of, you know, why an agent isn't getting the success or the results they want, right? It's either the skill set, the amount of the activities or the mindset, um, or it could be a few areas. I mean, right now, more than ever, it's the mindset and, you know, the story, letting the story run away of, you know, nobody's buying, the rates are out of control, and then that's just sort of downward spiral for the agent. So for us, it's constantly uh, the priming, right? Like kicking off, we do do a daily huddle on our team, um, starting with something that we're grateful for, like that's something that people are sharing, and then a role play that's right past that. And um, we're doing a weekly session where we're working to overcome and talk about the talk points about interest rates, because that's the hottest topic, right? People are sidelined because of the interest rates. And traditionally, agents haven't been really great at having maybe more of these like financial conversations. And so, you know, if we listen to calls, we're hearing what I would say way too much of somebody saying, well, we want to wait for rates. Okay, I'll call you back. You know, it's like, no, no, pause. Let's ask some more questions. Like, let's just, let's get curious, you know, to what Alex was mentioning. If you're coming from that heart of, you know, being a servant leader and, you know, wanting to help them, you can't take them somewhere if you don't understand more about their situation. So asking some additional questions. And I think also people don't want to be perceived as salesy or pushy or any of those things. It's like, hey, we're not coming across like that. We just need to ask some questions and understand because I'm also hearing some people six months ago are complaining that we weren't asking enough questions as agents and now they can't qualify. And so it was a disservice that we did to them maybe because we said, okay, we'll call you back in six months and didn't ask, oh, the extra mile to ask because we were afraid of our own perceptions. So I think it's overcoming the psychology of, psychology of the agent and taking responsibility that as a leader of how can I actually help influence and, um, set that for them in the morning, you know, and maybe throughout the day, some different um, tactics that we're doing. And then the second piece is we cannot talk about how to overcome and have these talk tracks and role plays of financial situation. Like, do they know how to calculate um, appreciation compared to like a 1% increase in interest rate and do the math with them? Could they actually like walk through the math with their customer? We just did this with our team again, right? And it showed appreciation compared to like 1% different in interest rate on a $500,000 house, the consumer was still going to be up $12,000 or $11,000 on an annual basis. If they don't know how to do that very comfortably, they're never going to approach that conversation with an agent. So I think we just cannot, we might get that, but I mean, we have to talk about it, role play it almost at nauseum that they understand it like backwards and forwards so that they're having that conversation with the client. Yeah, no, I love that. Um, yeah, I, I I spoke with my team yesterday and hit on many of the things that you just said. Um, one of the things that 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 struck me in the last three or four days is that look at the hill that we're climbing is is getting steeper, right? It's, things are getting harder, and for our teams, 
my feeling is that they have to, they, they got to work harder than they probably ever worked before. They got to work longer than they probably have been used to working. Uh, and they got to move faster. And I want to say, I'm just checking in like with you two. Is that, do you think that's valid or am I this something that my mind has uh, imagined? No, I think, no, that's hundred uh, percent. Oh, go ahead, Alex. Go ahead. I was just going to say, yeah, no, I think there's, there is more that you're doing, but one of the things, you know, that, that Corinne had hit on also, you know, and this kind of falls into that same, that mindset and that psychology of it is, you know, I'm letting them know that it's, it's harder and easier at the same time. So, you know, you could look at it as overall harder. However, you know, 2022, 2021, actually, that was a tough market too. It was just tough in a different way, right? Yeah. You were putting in an average of eight or 10 or 12 offers. You were showing people sometimes 40 and 50 homes. So now you don't have to be in the car as much. You just have to be on the phone more. But yes, you're making more calls. You're having more conversations to find that, that client that's ready to actually move forward on something. But you're also right now priming the pump because you are building the relationships now for the future. So if you really take those calls and again, don't think of them as transactions and really treat them as relationships. You are setting yourself up for when the market comes back strong for an abundant amount of success. Yeah. 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 And I think they'll need to just add something there to what Alex said is one of the biggest fall downs I've had as a leader is not sitting in the emotion and allowing like really empathizing with them because they're working hard. Guess what? I'm working hard too. So my natural like history has been like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay, we got to work hard, you know, like, let's go. And I don't really want to put a lot of like pause on that. And so um, what I've learned though, is to just like acknowledge that for them, right? Like to what you're saying, Chris, of like, yeah, some of you are working harder now than you've ever worked and it's for less money. Uh, and the thing of it is, is that you're also building skill and tolerance for higher stress. So when the market shifts, cause it always does. Um, and going into that, there's also going to be times that it's flipped. And you're not working as hard and you're making more money in relation to the output. And when you're in this industry long enough, you're going to experience both, right? Like it's cyclical. So let's focus on the skill we're building. And yes, it's hard and we're going to keep going. Yeah, I love, love it. Um, yeah, we're running, running up against time, but there's a couple of questions. If anyone else has any questions, quickly put them in uh, chat or use the QA feature on Zoom. But one of the questions you guys is, what's the one thing you wish you knew a year you wish you knew one year ago about lead conversion that you've learned, you know, recently. What comes to mind? So the the one that comes to mind for me, and and can't say I learned it too recently. It was about eight months ago, and I feel like I'm a I'm a student of the industry and really know a lot. But I don't know how many calls, how many people on here will know this. I know I just got an email back from an agent saying, yeah, ninety nine percent of the time that doesn't. That they're, they're not this, which is that FHA and VA mortgages are assumable. It's not based on the lender. It's not based on the bank. FHA and VA mortgages are assumable. And VA are actually assumable by civilians as well. Now, there's some caveats to it. So you want to check with somebody that knows what they're talking about. But I literally had somebody email me back on that saying 99% of all loans are not assumable. And uh, so I feel like knowing that I look at listings all the time and I see in realist that it was an FHA mortgage and it's not listed as assumable, but I see that it closed in, you know, 2021. I know it's a low interest rate. Now I'm going to go in with the advantage over other buyers agents because we can make an offer at full price with the assumable element. But I also have to often school the selling, the listing agent on what that means, how that works how it, it's not subject to, it clears, you know, the, the loan changes, everything. Yep. Um, so that, that's been a real uh, benefit to us because my agents are really using that. They're not talking about it with a client over the phone, by the way. They're talking about if I had a solution where I can get you into a 3.5% mortgage or a 4% mortgage, is that something that would interest you? Okay, great. Let's get together and talk about that. Yeah, so yeah. great. Um, Kren, anything to add? Anything you've like, you know, either learned or like came back into your your mind about conversion? Yeah, I would say um, I'm a very visual learner. And um, one of our coaches gave us the um, framework of like having your, your lid flip, right? Like if this represents your brain and like 
we get flipped, right? Or flipped all the way. And so that's what's happening actually right now is a lot of the buyers, they're flipped. They don't want to make a bad decision. They're afraid, right? So when somebody's flipped, um, it's you can give them like logical information, but they're not moving. And so it's remembering um, you don't even have to be an experienced agent. Actually, probably if you, the newer you are, the easier this concept is for you because you're not going to like the scripts or like those old habits. You're just listening. You're actively listening. Like there's no time in my 20 years, it's been more important than right now to be such a great active listener. And so does the person actually feel listened to, heard, seen, safe, secure? And that's what you're trying to accomplish in that conversation. And if you ha once you have them there, now there's some trust that's been established, right? Like we like to use this word rapport. But trust is really, that's going to be the piece. Like if we can get them closed and comfortable and feeling good, now they can actually listen to the advice. But if we just start throwing data at them and even great info, like assumable mortgages, all these solutions and options, we got to kind of go, hey, I'm right here. I got you. I understand what you're trying to accomplish. I'm here with you. Like now I can give you the solutions and now we can go. So now the result can be much different. Um, just a different piece to it that we weren't yeah. looking at outside 12 months ago. Yeah, no, that's re that's really great. They, um, people have to they have to feel safe and they have to feel, you know, that that uh, you're on their side for them to to walk through the door with you. Um, so really good. Hey, we are we are at, at time or almost out of time. So first of all, um, Karen and Alex, thank you, you know, both very very much for thank you. for um, thank you. being here. And uh, any if you have any referrals for Las Vegas and Phoenix, you guys know who to send them to. Um, Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Jeremiah, anything I need to close with? No, this was tremendous. I I took some notes. I think these are super valuable, so stay tuned for the next ones. We appreciate all of your partnership, Karen and Alex. Thank you all for being great Pro Plus partners. And uh, we're going to keep doing our part to um, try and fill the gap with consumer introductions and blaze through this tough season in the market. Awesome. Thanks, Thank everyone. you, guys. All right. Talk to you all soon. Peace.